Hey folks, welcome to the sixth update for Trials of Avergarth. Let's get to it! Alright, this is going to be a slightly shorter update than last time, mostly due to the fact that this previous allotment of time since the last video was mostly me cleaning up a lot of the code that I've been working on. I know it doesn't look that clean, but it is at least a lot cleaner than previously before. A lot of things have been changed, um, mostly trying to get everything streamlined on my end so I can really find out what was happening with the many bugs that I encountered along the way, and I'm sure there are still plenty there. But that's just to give the background, let's hop into what actually changed. So the UI changed again. The one from the previous video is going to be used as a uh, stat and detail, so it'll come out and it'll show the base and the buffs and all the kind of stuff. For now, I just put it all into the top to save on screen space and hopefully have a bit less of everything along the line of the side. It looks a bit neater, and I'm probably still going to squish it out even more, but that's for me to try out and see what happens. The radial was added. There's now a context button in the middle. Um, this is all new, and that was what I was explaining the previous time, where instead of having it that the player would choose three different locales, I would have one locale with multiple choices, or paths, so to speak. So now that I've added that, I can click on a path, choose one or the other, and that would lead to event A, B, and C running. So you wouldn't be able to choose which events happen, but you'd be able to see which set of events happen and therefore choose one. So once you're locked into a path, the three events or four events or five events would run in a sequence one after the other and you wouldn't be able to change any more. So it gives a bit of control loss to the player and gives a bit more of a challenge, I hope. Eh, we'll figure it out as we go along. So for now, there's just the, the simple one area and the two paths that actually don't matter at the moment because I still have not done any of that content. I'm trying to build the base of the game. So I pick a path, go with the context button. And then the context button would change, but I haven't gotten to that either. There's a lot to do. Um, in terms of the combat, it's a lot cleaner now. I'm starting to play around with a background that matches more the baseline. Once I start getting the tile actual imagery instead of just random um, barns <laughs> as block pathers, but I'm going to have like rubble terrain with trees and forests and whatnot, maybe a cliff terrain where it's only accessible and from one direction. Um, it'll start looking a lot prettier, but for now, function over beauty. So uh, other more attentive viewers may also note that the enemy units no longer have an image. Uh, they still have a gray square, so at least I know I'm hovering over them. And the stats do update if I hover over a unit. But the unit itself is now these little gray squares. So if you notice, after I hover over the Cobalt Scavenger, there's six Cobalt Scavengers out of 15. And you'll notice one, two, three, four, five, six little squares. So those will be representative of the units. I'm going to have little images for each one. So you have. Kind of like a, playing a Warhammer match where you have the little, uh, uh, whatchamacallits, miniatures. Um, same thing happens for the player, so if I spawn my, my units, you'll notice uh, the knights have 2 out of 12, and there's 2 of them, and then the soldier has 5 out of 15, and there's 5 of them. So the units are now visually updated into the count, and it's easier to tell how many there are on the field at a time. I'm going to try to also match it per size, so a dragon might actually take up the whole gray square, it would be like a one out of one unit, whereas the little cobalts will just be little things inside those gray squares. They're tiny, little things. <laughs> um, yeah, in terms of the stats, uh, it may be a bit confusing to players at the moment. I'm going to probably do a hover over once I get happy with it as I did in the previous video with all this stuff right basically troops and when you hover over you get the names I'm probably going to do the same with all the stats once I f am happy with how they are placed um, in terms of the back end of coding the stats themselves are now changed quite considerably um, let's stop the simulation and go to back to the normal 
So the units now, instead of being a giant um, set of stats, have their own kind of, it's just checking, okay, what creature it type it is, and then at the same time, I don't know why I placed them so far away, it checks their armor and weapons, and then it cal calculates their weapon mastery, and then their combat mastery, and all those stats run together gets the proper stats. So you'll notice that a soldier with good weaponry and somewhat decent armor and an attack value of 8, meaning they've trained a bit with swords and they have a pretty good initiative. And then a knight, which is an elite unit, but have even higher and almost double the armor um, value with, you know, royalty kind of plated armors with chainmail underneath and whatnot. So they'd be a lot tougher to get through. They also have a better parry, better initiative, they're on a horse, so they have better movement. All in all, an elite unit by name and by stats. All right, let's get back to the combat. <laughs> Toss those in there. Uh, the context button is now what starts the match. I believe I had a button at the top before um, to begin. I'll see what happens. I'm probably gonna keep this for like the round counter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, anyways, context button goes. It starts and another new feature is an initiative bar. Easier to tell who's gonna act next in the round. So I can extend it as far as I want, but for now I just have the, the certain amount of slotted units. And uh, yeah, so you can tell the knight is currently acting. The soldier's turn is the next and those cobalt scavengers go last with a lower initiative of six. Uh, knight is 10 and soldier is eight. And uh, yeah, so this knight having a movement of 2.5 uh, is over here, so you can move wherever those green squares are, except not on the ally, and I forgot to take that off, but shh, it's fine. <laughs> move that one there. Um, for now, the context button would end turn and rest the unit, but I haven't implemented it, so defend um, ends the turn for now. Soldier can only move one and a half, being a medium creature on land, so he's going to do that. Ooh, they're both going to defend. Interesting. I updated the AI as well, as I said, trying to figure out all the bugs. There was a few bugs that I noted that stopped uh, the AI from functioning. They would stall, and then the whole game would freeze. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't pretty. I think I fixed them all, but I'd be interested to see if anyone hits it upon it. Speaking of, the entire demo level here is available for free. There'll be a link in the description below. Um, yeah, continue on. The knight moves, doesn't attack. Washa! I hit everything apparently. Very nice. And you can tell that it did enough damage to kill off two of the kobolds. So both the knights hit, they did enough damage each, and um, the kobolds are now down to four. All right, soldier's turn. Uh -huh. Go up, defend. He's a bit slower. Oh, there we go. The cobalt moved up and tried to attack me, and this one attacked that, but failed. And yeah. There we go. Take that out. The knight goes again. Attacks. Soldier's turn. Ta da! Finish them off. The uh, initiative failed to update properly. Whoops. Things to fix. <laughs> this is as far as the game goes for now. It used to be that you'd like pick a card from a. Um, from a booster pack, but that is no longer the case. The booster packs are kind of broken at the moment as I'm trying to redo everything and the levels don't continue as that's broken too. So yeah, that's where it is at the moment. More progress, more progress. I hope you all enjoyed the update video. Keep on keeping track and I shall keep on working on it. Thanks all, have a good one.